much, Dr. Ang. Up next, we have Dr. Shuan Hay, who is the John T. Wilson Distinguished Service Professor in the Department of Chemistry and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the University of Chicago. Dr. Hay's research spans a broad range of fields, including chemical biology, RNA biology, bi biochemistry, and genomics. His work is foundational to developing potential therapies that target RNA methylation effectors against diseases such as cancer. So thank you, Dr. Hay, for being here today, and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Um, I'd really like to thank uh, ACRMP uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'd like to share some uh, collaborative work with uh, Dr. Um, Turago, uh, Turago uh, you heard already. So my lab works on epigenetics. Uh, what I show here are two identical twins, as uh, you all know, uh, these two ladies share the exact same genomic DNA sequence. And yet in their life, uh, they have different hobbies, they perform differently in classes or sports, and they will end up with different diseases. Uh, so the question is why? It turns out on top of uh, genomic DNA sequence, there's another layer of regulation called epigenetics. These are modifications occurring to our genome. So these two ladies, although they share exact same genomic sequences, the patterns of these uh, epigenetic modifications are different. The result of that is they have a different gene expression that leads to uh, different uh, uh, protein expression and, and behaviors, disease sensitivity, et cetera, et cetera. So my laboratory has been developing technologies to uh, map these subtle differences to infer the cell type specificity. And, and we particularly work on cell-free DNA from, from blood. And so it turns out that each of us have 30 to 50 trillions of cells, right? Uh, we all come from one fertilized egg. That means all of our cells share almost identical DNA sequences. Now, each of our cells or tissues could shade this DNA into the blood. If you just look at the sequence, they're pretty much the same. However, uh, if you can look at the modification patterns, each DNA fragment you study, you will be able to trace back the, the, the tissue of arranging. So that's basically what we work on. We develop these highly sensitive, robust tools that allow us to uh, really fish out a tiny amount of variations of these modifications on cell-free DNA to infer the presence of the disease and the disease status. In a way, if you think about it, this is if you're a healthy individual versus somebody who has a cancer appendix or colorectal or lung cancer, right? Uh, you have specific markers that serve as a barcode uh, to infer the presence and, and, and the stage of the diseases. So that's what we do uh, with uh, Dr. Karata, uh, uh, Aturaga. Basically, we look at this cancer um, and figure out their barcode, and we use um, modern instruments to read out these barcodes, and that will provide doctors information to make the best uh, um, decisions about therapeutics, the surgical, or prognosis information. So um, with Dr. Turaga, we, we basically want to apply this to a parental neal diseases and look at the diagnosis and really what's the best strategy for treatment. Uh, and also after treatment, uh, really uh, to monitor um, the, um, the therapeutic efficacy and infer long-term survival information. Um, this is a technology we uh, invented at the University of Chicago and have been broadly applied to a variety of different uh, cancer types, but you can see here parental neo is actually the one uh, we're actually pushing uh, towards clinical trial at this moment. Uh, this is also a wide effort in the GI section in general. We have uh, Dr. Turaga, uh, Mark Bissane, Karen Kim, and a bunch of other uh, partners in the city uh, in which we basically have the school for look at the colorectal cancer, appendix uh, cancer, and, and the parental neal metastasis in general. Uh, this is supported by NIH. Uh, we actually have all the samples NIH collected over the last 20 years um, on, on these subjects. 
So this is sort of the first study we published back in 2017. This was just a, uh, a, a proof of concept which we took a healthy individual and a colorectal cancer in back that, that time. It's easier to get this uh, colorectal cancer samples. And as you, as you can see, we applied our technology from the blood with this uh, barcode we generated. We can uh, clearly differentiate healthy from, from cancer patients. And the sensitivity specificity back then um, were, were just excellent. And nowadays we can actually get this higher uh, to 93, 95%. So um, in, in addition to just the cancer diagnosis, we, we, uh, we realized that, um, uh, based on the samples collected at the National Institutes of Health, uh, we can actually um, um, detect the, the risk of colorectal cancer one year before uh, the patient was diagnosed. Uh, again, this was following 20 years of sample collected by NIH, which we, we got hold of and applied our tool. Now, this is the work here uh, with uh, our perennial um, um, uh, uh, physicians on campus. As you can see that uh, when we had these uh, uh, parenteal metastasis, so we can clearly infer uh, where the disease come from. Right? These are from color, uh, colon um, um, origin. These are from appendix. Uh, sorry, this is appendix. This is colon. And we, uh, we can also use this blood-based te test to uh, look at the, um, um, the grade of the disease. Uh, there's, this is a non-disease, a healthy individual, the low-grade uh, parenteal, and this is a uh, um, more sort of advanced uh, stage of a perennial diseases. So with this uh, inc very encouraging uh, pilot data, uh, so um, Dr. Turaga and his team started uh, together with us uh, a clinical trial last year. And of course, because of COVID-19, uh, we're, we're still trying to um, manage this whole process and, and hopefully we're, we're really push this through. This will be really important because we're going to have data connect, collected at a different time point, which, which will be critical uh, to infer why these are the experiments. We're going to generate this barcode and later on uh, with new patients, we can apply this barcode and, and basically let the doctor sort of have enough information to make a decision um, how best to treat that individual patient. So um, again, uh, this is um, uh, um, a liquid biopsy. Um, approach uh, we've been um, trying to develop with uh, Dr. Turaga. Um, we had a great time um, and I, I'm really looking forward to complete this uh, clinical trial and, and hopefully we'll generate valuable markers to benefit the patients in the future. Thank you very much.